What's up everyone and happy Engineers Week. I hope you're busy discovering the engineering all around you and how it plays a role in your daily lives. I also hope you're checking out some awesome engineering careers and learning about the skills that engineers use to create the world around us and how they come up with solutions to the challenges we face. An engineer is a person who designs and builds complex things, machines or systems and structures. Engineers find out how things work and then use that knowledge to help them do it and come up with solutions. Engineering is all around us. Take a look around and you'll see lots of engineering inventions. There are lots of different types of engineers and they all work together in teams to come up with solutions to challenges. Engineers are also behind many of our favorite sporting pastimes from designing amazing stadiums and technology that analyzes our performance to help us play better to equipment that keeps us safe and injury free and designs that make sport accessible to all. So that's why we're back at Crow Park, the home of Gaelic games to discover the role engineers play in sport. I'll be joined by some GAA stars. I say joined, I mean challenged. And we'll test out some new sports equipment and technology that are transforming sports around the world and discovering the diverse roles engineers play in this. There'll also be a robot or two joining in on the crack. So I hope you're up for the game, cause it's game time. Whatever sport you're into, engineers are part of the process. Everything in the human world has been built and designed by engineers, scientists and teams of others. And that includes the things you like most, like your phone, your bed, your laptop, your car, your house, airpods and even your favourite sports. From designing footballs, boots, slitters, hurlies, to making sure your gear is comfortable, practical and even aerodynamic. Engineers build equipment that help us train better and they design technology that help us analyze our performances, providing data on our strengths and weaknesses, and also those of your opponents, helping you gain the competitive edge. Engineers also design the awesome stadiums around the world, making sustainable futuristic buildings that improve your experience. Engineers even design equipment to make sports accessible to everyone, improving the design of wheelchairs or running blades, which are those high performance prosthetic legs, or other prosthetics that help athletes who need them. An Irish mechanical engineer designed and built this prosthetic arm to help a young rower. Engineers change the world and make a big difference. Many of them are even elite athletes playing sport at the highest level. In fact, let's hear from some of them now. Hey everyone, I'm Neil McManus, centre forward with the Antrim Senior Hurlers. I'm a manufacturing engineer uh, with Andor Technology in Belfast. Engineering is really important to Gaelic Games so that we can keep up to pace with the technological developments of the day. Hey everyone, I'm Mary Ryan. I play Camogie for Tipperary and I play in the full back position. My favourite part of playing the sport is being involved with a team, being part of a team, working towards a shared goal, which is similar to what I do in my role as an engineer. Engineers are really helping uh, modern day athletes perform at the highest level. I also hope many of you have been able to get involved in the steps and the Gaelic Players Association challenge to engineer the game of the future. The competition is open to all primary and secondary school students and challenges you to come up with ideas or innovations of what the Gaelic games could look like in 2050. And there's some fantastic prizes to be won, so I encourage all of you to get involved. Bug your teacher until they do, or teachers annoy your students until they get involved. Just please, someone annoy someone. <laughs> the deadline's the 25th of March, so get moving. Whether it's mechanical engineers, biomedical engineers, chemical engineers, or electrical, material, civil and structural engineers, they all contribute to helping us perform and enjoy in our sport. So let's take a look at some of those contributions, starting with equipment. Because whatever sport you play, you'll use some form of equipment. A ball, it could be a tennis racket, Ooh. A helmet, if you're playing tennis with me, you can have a slitter. American football, go long. Or a discus. 
<laughs> I'm not doing that. Because all this equipment must be built to work properly and to help athletes perform their best. A lot of equipment these days is designed and tested using computers and subject to a high degree of analysis. Anything that flies through the air, like a javelin, a football, or a slitter, or you if you shoulder someone massive, is tested in wind tunnels or fluid tunnels, kind of like this one, to analyze their aerodynamics. Check out the range of testing the World Cup football is put through. Nothing is left to chance in a game of inches, and that includes the gear you wear. Everything in the world around us is made up of different materials, and these materials all have different properties, and they all have their uses. When something is designed or made, it's important to choose the best materials for the job or the product. Nobody wants a glass hurley or a concrete football or wooden gloves or, or, you know, those jerseys that absorb the water and get 10 times heavier when it rains. Oh, flashbacks. The choice of materials is important. Material properties such as strength, hardness, flexibility or weight are all considered to choose the most suitable ones for the job. And sustainability is also an important factor when discussing materials, making sure the materials we use don't harm the planet or negatively impact the environment. Take hurleys, for example. Traditionally made of ash, strong, flexible, practical. But Ireland's ash trees are in danger of dying out due to diseases and damage caused by the threat of the emerald ash borer beetle. So an alternative is being explored, like bamboo. And Irish companies are investigating these more sustainable alternatives. And some players have already switched to using bamboo hurleys. Gloves are also used in many sports for goalkeepers and players to help them catch and hold onto the ball. The gloves increase the force of friction between the ball and your glove, helping you grip it. And they also must be comfortable to wear. There's even a liquid that can improve your grip. And it's popular in the NFL or weightlifting. It's a liquid chalk that's a water-based mixture of magnesium carbonate, alcohol, and a thickener. And after rubbing it on your hands, it binds to your skin, creating an amazing gripping surface. Just don't overdo it. Engineering, science, and technology are changing sports around the world and helping athletes improve their training, performance, and recovery. It's revolutionizing training and sports equipment design. And computer scientists, hardware and software engineers, sports scientists, and data analysts are able to track and collect data and analyze almost every aspect of an athlete's performance. 
indicators like heart rate, speed, distance covered in a game, oxygen levels, angles of movement, force generation, all that can be measured and used to help athletes improve their health, performance, and their recovery. So check out this piece of equipment. The beginnings trace back to the 2012 All-Ireland Hurling Championship, where former Kilkenny hurler Noel Doherty's hamstring injury ruled him out of the game, but gave him an idea. Using his background in construction and design, he created a device that would help him strengthen his hamstring muscles during rehab and prevent further injury down the line. This idea eventually became the Hamstring Solo and is now used by top teams and athletes around the world. It uses built-in sensors to measure hamstring strength and quantify left to right hamstring strength imbalances, helping to assess injury risk, track fatigue and monitor recovery. The data is monitored through an app on your mobile device, enabling a greater insight into hamstring function and strength. So let's give it a shot. Feel that burn. Here is the graph output of the force being generated during my exercise. The data will then clearly show you the difference in strength output between your left and right hamstring. Here you can see I have a deficit of 3.92%. That's not bad. Anything over 15% and you need to be careful and your training needs to be modified. Let's look at someone who would possibly have a greater imbalance between left and right hamstrings. You can see the right hamstring represented by the green and the left by the red. You can see a much greater deficit. And let's see what the data tells us. The data never lies. Other innovations have also improved the accuracy of decision-making during a game, which, as we all know, can be the difference between winning and losing. Not that it's all about winning. Time tracking systems, goal line technology, video technology, GPS, all these can improve the accuracy, enjoyment and experiences of both athletes and spectators. Hawkeye, for example, is a computer and camera system which traces a ball's trajectory. And it's used in tennis, cricket and in Crow Park to detect if a point has been scored, ruling out possible human error and improving the decision making process. High-speed cameras take many photographs a second, with the information being analyzed by a computer, giving a definitive decision on whether the ball or the slitter went over the bar. So you no longer have to rely on fellas like this. <laughs> oh, you go away over that. Did you hear he was the mascot at one stage as well? <laughs> Bleeding crackers he is. <laughs> I didn't see that one at all. <laughs> you have that in the air, do you? They're even starving. Robots are way more reliable. And they don't get hungry. So computers may replace humans in the decision-making process. But will we ever see a robot step onto the pitch? <laughs> Good one. This is RoboKeeper, the fastest goalkeeper in the world. And it's the fastest for a very special reason. The RoboKeeper's eyes are two high-speed cameras located up in the top corners. Each camera takes 90 pictures a second, so a total of 180 pictures. And it sends that information to a computer at the back, which uses image processing software to predict the likely trajectory of where the ball is going to go into the goals. Then it sends that information to RoboKeeper, which sets him in motion saving the ball every time. All of this happens in a split second, faster than you could kick the ball. Are goalkeepers of the future going to be robots? Well, there is a catch. Because RoboKeeper here is on a pivot, he can only move like this. So take a look at the goals. You can probably imagine a position 
that the keeper is not able to get. Have a look at the goals. Where do you think that position is? I can tell you, it's located in the top corners where Robo Keeper physically can't get to. And even for human goalkeepers, mathematics tells us that there is an optimal position to place the penalty if you want to maximize your chance of scoring. And that's located in the top corners, out of what's called the diving range. The range which a goalkeeper can actually get to in a split second from when you kick the ball until it hits the back of the net. So that's what Matt tells us, aim for those top corners. Bit risky, but if you get it, more than likely you're gonna score. So I think I can't just stand here. I think I'm gonna have to take a penalty. So mathematics tells us where to put it. Robo keeper, you're going down. Ooh, zing, zing, zing. Eat that, Robo keeper. <sighs> Robots, what do they know? Everything it seems. <laughs> These new innovations are not just kept for elite athletes either. There's now a wide range of fitness trackers like these ones that are available to everyone that give us insights like sleep patterns, nutrition and exercise. And mine is now telling me I need to get moving. So I think it's time for a few challenges, which means I need someone to challenge me. Hi, my name is Grace Clifford. I play football for the Kildare Senior Ladies Football Team. The position I play is midfield. Okay, Grace, thank you for joining me here at Explorium for the Target Challenge. I hope you're up for a challenge. I think I am. Okay. I think I am, yes. Because for Steps Engineers Week, I came up with a challenge where we both have two minutes to get the highest score possible. Using the ball, you have to kick out of your hands though, that's the rule. Okay. And you have to either get the goals for five, you have the pillars for 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, or if you have the confidence, you can aim to chip it into the cart for 50. Easy. 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 <laughs> I take back that. <laughs> any any uh, particular approaches? What way do you think? I don't want to give any secrets away. All oh, right, this is getting competitive. Yes. Who wants to go first? You. <laughs> I'm always going to rock, paper, scissors. No. This is straight up me. <laughs> I think this is you. I'm going to go first. Yes, yeah. Okay, put two minutes on the clock. I'm up first because I do my stretches. You'll need to. Uh, You'll need it all. I'm ready to go. Okay. All right. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, <laughs> one. Go. Okay, which one? Oh! <laughs> oh yeah, I could ricochet back. Oh, okay. Interesting technique. Oh, yeah. No! Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Confidence is low. Oh, God. This is disaster. <laughs> this is oh, oh. What is the technique? <laughs> oh, oh my god. god. This is gonna be. <laughs> if, if you keep laughing. You've blended your time. Alright, I'm gonna go for the big ones, alright? <laughs> That's what I was hoping for. Alright, I think I got it. No pressure, no pressure. You actually played. No. Oh. <laughs> I, I yes. We've got a ten. Oh, that was close. <laughs> okay, you've forty-five seconds left. You've ten points in the bag. No pressure. I don't know. Is I'm learning what not to do here. Oh. Oh. Yes. Yes, no, no. Okay. <laughs> I can't I can't flag. Okay. Ten oh. seconds left. Ten seconds left. Oh my oh. god. <laughs> the flat one, the flat one is in. <laughs> Time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You've probably learned now. What not to do? What not to do. I have learned what not to do. Safe to say, yes. 
I'm not going to big myself up too much here though because I'm... What was wrong with my technique? I you weren't, I don't know what you were going for. I was going for the, 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 it the wasn't, ball. you were going for kind of a low Excellent. and yeah, I don't think, I think I might go for more of a lining up. Uh, okay, great. Uh, not the most uh, outstanding perform. I wore the wrong socks. I have the, I wore the black ones. I'm much better with the white I socks. I hear excuses. That's all I hear. Um, yeah, okay, it's just excuses. A score of 25 to beat. Where's your head at? I'm not going to say much. Okay. Feeling confident. I think I learned what not to do. That's what I kind of feel I took from your performance there. Um, but we'll just see how I go there now. I don't okay, know. Are you ready? Yeah, I think I'm good. All right. I'm feeling it. Yeah, I'm feeling good. Two minutes on the clock. Okay, okay. Ready? Three, yeah. Two, one, go. Okay. What's that line? <laughs> Okay. Oh God. Oh no, oh no, stop, stop, stop. Oh, no. oh lad. Oh no, no, no. Oh my god. Oh no! That's 20. Oh. I'm allowed. Okay, hold on. Slow and steady, slow and steady. <laughs> Do I get 50 though? 15. <laughs> What's my time? Oh. About 25. I have a minute. Well, I can stop now, can't I? Because I'm winning. The 25 is annoying me. <gasps> How many times have I nearly got to 25? Okay, 50. Will I go? <gasps> Hi, boss. Are you miscounting me? We're not level. Twice double, 15. Oh. Okay. Okay, 15 seconds left. I'm winning anyway, so I'm feeling fairly calm. Okay. I went to You got 15, you got 15, 20, 30. Uh, so the results are in, Grace and uh, actually someone lost the results. They were lost in transit. There's someone they didn't, uh, I think there's a rematch. Wait, so there's someone in my... Oh, well, I remember anyway. I, rem I remember the results anyway. We don't, we don't need to, we don't need this. I won. <laughs> I won. Why, what was it? Uh, 25 to? 65. Yeah, yeah. Convincing. Good stuff. Yeah. One goes to you. All right. <laughs> GA is part of every parish. It's there's one in every in every local town, and it's a sense of belonging when you play with your club and you represent your club at intercounty level. And um, it's what I love to do. So that's why I love playing the game. We do a lot of homework on watching ourselves back. So that's a huge area where engineering comes into play and technology, where we watch a lot of video analysis on ourselves and we have a statistician who comes in and would do a lot of video clips for us and we'll do a lot of homework on ourselves. And not only that, we'll do a lot of homework on the opposition as well. We use an app within the squad where we would track our wellness every morning and we put in our sleep and our wellness and how our mood and how it's affected. And we'll get a little message saying, you need more sleep and you need to. So we do all of these little things that uh, prepare us for the, you know, to be, to be ready to play our game and be at 100%. Recovery has become a huge side of any athlete's preparation. It's a game of inches, I suppose, and that's what people focus in on to try to be 100%, along with the massage guns, all of these little areas, all these technologies have helped improve and speed up the recovery aspect for, for athletes. And the demand of the game now, where you're week on week and training has become really tough, these are all huge areas that have become really popular. Not only that, there's such amazing, fantastic careers you can get in sport nowadays, you know, not on, just on field, but away from the field, such as form and sports performance side of things sports science, the engineering side of things where it comes down to like GPS equipment and such as you know designing gear, designing equipment for recovery. Really the world is your oyster with it. It's endless and it's a really exciting time I think for sport. For any young boy or girl looking to pursue a career in GA or any sport at all it just requires commitment, hard work 
um, but most importantly, enjoying it. It's huge, and if you don't enjoy it, you're not going to you're not going to you're not going to do your best at it. So it's about getting out, uh, being active, being with your friends, and enjoying it and embracing it, and it'll all go from there. Happy Steps Engineers Week to you all. I hope you all get out, get active, and explore the world of sport and engineering. See you, Grace. If she wasn't a fellow Lily White, I'd be so annoyed right now. As you can see, engineers play a huge role in many aspects of our favourite sports. And many different types of engineers work together in teams to develop equipment, materials, products and systems that support athletes and fans and help sport become sustainable and more accessible for everyone. And there's a huge range of engineering careers and I hope you've all been inspired to discover careers that you'll enjoy and that'll have a positive impact on your community, town or your country. Guys, I hope you have an awesome Engineers Week and I hope you enjoyed this video and a massive thank you to the team at Engineers Ireland for all the shows, events, workshop, resources and talks to celebrate all things engineering this week. And if you've enjoyed the show or have any questions, let me know on social media, which mine is here somewhere. And guys, I hope you have a fantastic Engineers Week. I need to get practicing. All right. Get up here, Ah, oh, come on, come on, ref, foul play! Mm, I am the referee, analyzing. <laughs> Prognosis negative, no foul. Oh. You suck. <laughs> Happy Engineers Week, everyone. Sorry about that. Call it quits. Don't take over the world.